Okay. Welcome for this fe to the February 21st, 2018 Board of Selectmen's meeting here in the town of Deerfield. The meeting is being taped. Um, we'll start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Yep. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Can I have a, a minute to oh, just sure. read? I just had not. I was in the other meeting. So this I just actually go is a this December. Real quick. Okay. It's a December meeting. Yep. It looks like I was not. No, no, you made the motions. Oh. But I'm not listed as present, so that's got to be fixed. Oh, that's weird. I think I abstained from the meeting, I mean the minutes, but uh, yeah, so we just need to add me. Oh, I didn't, you know what, Trevor? I didn't even rec I didn't even realize that you weren't listed as being here. Huh. But you made motions, so you had to have been here. <laughs> <laughs> or at least it says he did. It says yeah. I did. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm sure you were. I don't, I mean, we try not to have meetings where, um, yeah. Oh. Someone's not in there. Yeah, and you came back from your um, surgery. Yeah. Surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Did the no, they did. They, I remember this. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they they listed you all the way through. Now that I look at this. Yep. Okay. Um. Thank you for seeing that. Yep. That would have been terrible. It would may not be legit. Oh, I read these already. Okay. Yep, I did. I read these online. So. Did I, um, yep. Um, and the and the OPEB conversation is okay with you? Um, yeah. Because that that was sort of. Yep. It just and mentioned it looks like that. Finance committee passed the 36 or 35. Well, a four percent of, of our health insurance. And right. actually, I think that's a better policy than the two percent of free cash. Yeah. What? Because what I wanted was to make sure that on a, like, if we had a, a tough year, a tough year like the stock market crash flexible. again in like 2008 and 2009, we, you know, had the ability not to pay into OPEB. Yep. Um, that was why I wanted to do the free cash policy. But, but doing the percentage of our health insurance. I think it's a good, really good idea because then if we have a bad year, we can use our um, um, we can use it towards our retirement right. already exactly. expenses, which at the current year is about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, you know, that gives us we can build it up. Yep. And and if we use have a bad we have year, to. we can you know use yep. it towards um, our our obligation. Our current obligation, which you cover, which we cover right now. Yep. So does that make sense? To you? It does. So I you're okay I, with it? Okay. I, I I have to admit, though, I, I from reading these things again, it's like I think we already did approve these, but it's okay. I thought we did too. The, the minutes, I, yeah. yeah. It's okay. Let's we'll we'll double approve. We'll double approve. <laughs> so go ahead. To make a motion to approve the minutes of. Uh, December 27th, 2017. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, let me just, for Wendy, let me just make sure we. Yeah, let me look back a second here. Um, February 8th. Trevor, you uh, made the motion, right? Yeah, just with that, with that change that, that I would be added okay. to the minutes. Ed. Okay. Um, Selectman's announcements. I, I just wanted to give you guys um, uh, the vigilant guard information I have so far. Okay. Um, it's it, the this is the exercise that's going to happen in November. It's a National Guard um, exercise and on the eighth and the ninth. Is I think is of November. They're going to the National Guard will come here and they're going to do a dam failure. Um, on the either the Harriman or the Sherman, we we don't yep. know which one yet. Um, I mean, this is just the first planning meeting, so it's a little vague. But um, I at the Homeland Security Council on 
Tuesday, I requested money for $15,000 for money um, to do evaluators. So we will have a, our own evaluators and after action plan for us. And then um, I probably about $20,000 to do a tabletop the week before okay. um, or the two weeks before, sometime in that frame, so that we can practice with everybody up and down the valley. Because I have the commitment of Charlemont and Shelburne um, and us to participate. So okay. um, there, and there, this, remember I was trying to push the um, FEMA exercise last fall. And yes. so I was this is taking kind of a glad that that hard knocks was canceled because they just weren't, they weren't, letting they wanted us to participate but then they weren't letting us get anything out of it they just sort right. of want us standing around this one will actually allow us to practice uh, like an evacuation and mm -hmm. um, a failure of the dam is much more than a release that we had in irene so instead of like a 30 foot wall of water we might have like a 60 foot wall of water something like that okay. so um but the biggest deal for it is um we need to make sure we have an emergency action plan from Great River Hydro. Right, right. now, the numbers in our SEMP plan, our, our comprehensive emergency management plan, are dead numbers. Mm -hmm. They're discontinued numbers from TransCanada. So we have nothing. They own the dams on the Deerfield and the Connecticut, and they the FERC transferred the license back in May. So it's a year May. We have no emergency numbers. Emergency numbers. Okay. It's absolutely ridiculous, um, and it's not acceptable. And the other thing that um, uh, came out of the Homeland Security meeting on Tuesday is that Meg Birch, who is like the head nurse on Union 38, um, came up with this um, school emergency triage planning training plan. Um, it's $2,500 plus $25 per manual for all the nurses, school nurses. So it looks like Homeland Security is going to um, sponsor that, right. which is really exciting because what that means is that, um, you know, like our family unification plan and all that, they'll be more open to it and we can squeeze it in. Right. So I think Trooper Carlisle certainly wants us to keep on that. I, I hope I so. Know. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I, it, it's only a template, but um, we, we can get some extra training, I think, and uh, if people are interested and I'm interested. I, I, f I feel like we should be pursuing it. So whatever. I can. On this world, so. um, we'll, we'll make sure Homeland Security gives us some extra money. Um, did you have anything else? Yeah, I have a few things if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Um, no. A few ahead. weeks ago, we spoke about uh, doing something about having our employees go out on the aerators at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, yes. I don't think that we ever came to a final decision or made a policy or whatever we need to do correct but I'd, I'd like to see that through so we can give instructions to Kevin and Keith that you know not to allow people on those things that they need to pick it up and put it on hard ground mm -hmm. um, so that makes sense to me oh, yeah it, should I make a motion to that effect that now before I do that is it can we make a policy like that uh, well I, I would think so I mean that's, that's a, safety a safety thing, thing. Yeah, yeah I would think so too I mean, I haven't talked. To, I hadn't had a chance to talk to Kevin about it, about logistically how that works. But I would have to imagine nobody is in favor of climbing out on cables or whatever they have to do to get out to those things. Right. I We're think still having the issue with the fog. I don't mean yeah. fog like fog, but right, the foam in the, the foam in that thing. Today, I yeah. saw another photo that was yeah. just—it's really bad. We got to get to the bottom of it. Okay. But um, yeah, I mean, I. I would second that motion. I just right. don't know logistically how that gets happened or if we should talk to Kevin first. Or Have you spoken with him about it I at have all? Not. Well, I, I, I did speak with him several weeks ago. Uh, I inquired if we had equipment that would go on our loader to pick it out. And he, he does have something that fits onto the bucket, and it's an, uh, an extendable arm, if you will, yeah. with a hook on the end of it. And he feels that the, the that would tractor hold the could pick it up. But he, even if that isn't, I, I mean, I think it would be because of the, the risk involved that we should, you know, acquire something, an apparatus something. that, or even hire somebody. I, I do realize that it would cost a couple hundred dollars to have somebody go down there and do it. Crane it out or something. But, but I mean, you know, we're spending $8,000 a week moving sludge. I mean, if we had to spend $200 every other month 
to lift this thing out so people could work safely. It I don't makes think sense that that's to me. A, a big issue. Kip, I, I, I have you know? no problem with it. Okay. Um, a safety um, issue is always important. So right, if you make that motion, uh, I, I accept that. I move that, that uh, we instruct uh, Kevin Scarborough and uh, Keith Mine at the wastewater treatment plant that uh, we would ha like no one to be out onto those aerations while they're floating in the tank uh, to remove the aerator to by service machine. it, by machine to service it. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? The only discussion is just, you know, if Kevin has some feedback yeah. on that. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm flexible on that, but, sure. I just, oh, yeah, but I'm sure he wants safety for his men as yeah. well, so however we can do that would be great. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, on that note, did you happen to talk with Kevin about the uh, pump at Captain Lathrop? I did, and yeah. he said he was waiting for the warmer weather, and today would have been a great day to do it, but uh, he, <laughs> he, does, um, he does have a plan in place to okay. get that going. So as okay. far as I know, he was Good. waiting just so it didn't freeze up on him when he was trying to do it. The other, next thing is... Oh, wait, I, wait, we've got to actually vote. All those oh, we'll in favor? Vote, yeah, we'll vote. The, uh, so all those in favor? Yeah. I'm sorry. Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah, so the next thing? The, the next thing is I saw that um, Wendy had gotten this notification from Ty and Bond uh, the 2017 Massachusetts Water and Sewer Rate Survey, and that I uh, took uh, notice of the average sewer rate in Massachusetts is $862, and our average sewer rate is around $500. Mm -hmm. So I, I noticed that too. Still, you know, our water as well is really our water is well. You know, here they're saying the average water uh, bill is $600. Um, you know, it depends here because I know a lot of people who irrigate their bills are much higher than that. Of but course. If you're using it just, you know, for bathing and washing and uh, dishes and drinking and cooking and stuff like that, I think right. they're pretty reasonable. I, I tried to get on that link and um, I was able to find the water, but I couldn't find the sewer information. I might have been looking. The dashboard? Um, for some reason, Deerfield wasn't listed unless I was looking in the wrong spot, but um, I was and then I had to give up. But I, I, didn't, I, didn't look, I didn't get the information for Deerfield. From, from there. there. I you, got it from the information I received from Sarah. Right, and, okay. And I just, I did it myself. Great. Um, the other thing is we, have we prepared anything to move forward with uh, reducing that CPA fund to 1%? I know that time's coming sooner. Is that something? Well, that, um, you know, we had talked about it. We mm -hmm. did go to the CPA meeting and yeah. discussed it. And and, I was trying um, to remember. But you know what, Kip? In the scheme of things of trying to oh. get money, I, I was actually shocked. I had thought we were getting less, but we even even the lo the lowest year we got is forty four percent match. So, so I, that's a forty four percent rate of return. Yeah, I think is that what it was? So, yeah. yeah. So for for every dollar we give, we get forty four cents back. Right. Even but the lowest year and the other years on the average, it's been much higher. So, I. It's a good rate of return I, on I your still, money, but yeah. I, I mean, I I feel like. I kind of want to just wait another year because we, we have the church, the community center, and we have senior housing that we want to do. And well, How much money do we have in the senior housing? Well, it's all in one thing. It's we one have, pot. Uh, so you can use 1. it towards... 1.5, I think, or 1.4. Um, so you can, use, you can use it towards... I mean, we seriously have been trying to get senior housing for... And Kip, I was I was open to that too because I was like, yeah, yeah if we're I, not I doing good. it, that makes sense to to drop it dip back. And then when I talked with the guys on the board, they were saying, you know, when they looked at it, they thought, you know, where else can we get forty four percent rate you of can. return on your money? So I was thinking, just as a pure investment for money that we do in the town, that would be one place that I didn't think it was a good idea to cut it back. I do, I mean, well, I understand it's people's tax money, but. It's the only place that they spend tax money that they actually can earn a good rate of return to the town. So that was my only thought about not doing it, but I'm still open to that. I guess I, you know, when I hear about the senior housing, and I'm not saying that I don't, I'm not for that, it's that uh, this pot of money is growing. Mm -hmm. and it's getting quite large and that, you know, it's gonna take an outside partner for the community to come oh, in. Yeah. And I think that, um, even though people are, are very favorable to senior housing, I've been around this community for 40 something years. That I think a lot of people are gonna be mad if John Smith comes in to do this and the town hands him a million dollars. Well, why does he get, you know, and I, it's I a subsidized to help it him, is. and I get that. But it's it, hard to it, swallow it's gonna sometimes. be, a lot of people are gonna be upset, you know, and 
Um, and maybe we, well, yeah, it's how you structure it, it for Kim. something. It's no, how, I, I get it's, it. It's how I, you yeah. structure it. I get it. But even like with the the church as well, we we looked into this quite a bit, and that you know you can use those funds, but once you use those funds for that, that dictates a lot of other things, which could make a project. And and I I don't want to use any numbers because yep. people sometimes right. run with it, but it could make the project be a lot more expensive because we can't just bring it to a certain point and stop. We have to go all the way. And, that, and, and that's a, another difficult that thing. That was a question so, that I had for the board, too. I said, now, yeah. my concern last year when we asked for it and then we kind of backed sure. off because we were afraid of that, and I said, is there, you know, can, is there any reason we couldn't use it to just redo the steeple per se mm -hmm. and uh and and still be able to dig it up and put a foundation under and that stuff so th i think they were open to that they said there wasn't they didn't think there was any reason why we couldn't use it for some stuff and and it wouldn't tie us because i was afraid of that too is that going to well, tie us into not yeah. being able to change any windows or but it, it it goes beyond that and and by that i mean um if you if the the building has a value of a certain amount and you start to improve it, and you get to a threshold of 30 or 35 percent of the value, then the building code makes you do that too. Right. So you know, but I now because you used the CPA funds, which is a historical preservation, a lot of the things that you need to do to that building have are to not follow allowed. that same, I see. you know, uh, mindset. And it's so a fine the, line. It, it just, yeah, it, 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 it gets this blurry but that's thing why, even blurry, I mean, you know, uh, so. But that's why I'm hoping we'll have a building committee that will help make those decisions because, well, I mean, they, I think, honestly, people, I mean, once we get the church, this, this has been drawn out, unbelievable. Yes, it has. But once we get the church, I, I, I mean, I think people genuinely are excited about that being a community center. And, and and we need to move the seniors. We have we have no choice. Right. But and and, and you, then that frees up the senior center, the current senior center, for you know other uses. But then the other uh, for housing. But we we've, we've looked at this, and what happens is that the church then becomes to a a cost that's not efficient, where you could go another location and build a brand new building probably bigger that's really modern that's for less money part of my fear as you know well and, and so that this this is why you know when you start down this it just keeps turning and turning and growing um, it is a big it, decision it is a big it really decision. is and how, how we how that I'm so curious to see how everybody in town feels about that I would love to poll people at town meeting and say you know do you want this do you, what if the building came down? What if, what, you know, have several scenarios of we keep the, you know, everybody got married there, they baptize their kids, they worship there every Sunday. Our town so there's clock such, is there. a, Our such town an clock attachment is there. to oh, it. Right. But then again, you know, you think monetarily, is it the right thing to do? And so, you know, maybe, that maybe in a case like that, you could try to you know preserve the building right. as it is and v limit its use and just right. have it if you will like a museum in old exactly. Deerfield you know if you want to keep it but right you know it's to, to make it to, make. to make it into a functioning uh, senior center and and use the building to its full potential you know it, it you're just talking a lot of money yeah you're going it, it's you really are. expensive and then it, like I said then it gets to a point are you better off just building a new structure that's you know better all around like but, greenfields Nice building I went by the other day. It looks really nice. Oh. Um, but they also had a huge grant for that. Of course, yes. And, and, yep. and we're just we we're not eligible for that. No. Our demographics. I know we don't have that kind of demographics. But. Yeah. And, and the last thing that I wanted to bring up was the um, from the planning board meeting last night. Um, what does this board want to do as far as providing uh, an opt-out option uh, after the uh, bylaws are put into a place, I'm not in favor, really. But, I'm not either because uh, it's it's going to happen. Well, I, I mean, mean, the, the town, town already voted for it, so it's it's. I, I get it, but I think what the planning board, a lot of the members were, you know, they they agreed to go forward with what we did last night, and uh, they all thought that it was going to, at some point, have a a multiple choice and having you know 
going forward with the bylaws to protect the community if it goes forward is understandable and that can happen at town meeting. But what they're feeling is that if we don't do this option to have a ballot question, then come toward town meeting, then you can't do it at all because it wasn't prepared. And they feel that, you know, in good faith, they agreed to move forward with this process. And now all of a sudden it's like, you know, they're only getting part of what they agreed to. Um, well, not really, because I said one of the things was we are the permitting process, you know, the special permitting um, authority for medical marijuana. We also are for the ex expedited permitting district, which, so I don't think that they can do the expedited permitting district anyway. I don't think they can supersede us, but it, it just doesn't make sense for them to be the authority, and they don't seem to be interested in... Well, and working with us, so I, you know, we just need to move ahead, Kip. And I'm but not. But that's, I mean, I, I get that, and I, I hear what you're saying, but that's your opinion of it. And that it I, is. The, it is I true. Think that, that's true. You know, in a democracy, that you know, and we're, we all try to be fair to our citizens. That you know, it, we might think it's a forgiven conclusion. Hey, everybody voted for this once, and this is a slam dunk. They want it, and in moving forward in the proper processes, which we're doing, but to just have the choice that people can check a box yes or no if we feel that strongly that this is the choice they're going to make what harm is it it's ink on a paper you know but if you don't do it you know th then you know people don't have that choice you you're taking away a choice for them and and i do think a lot of people when they voted for this thought it was different i mean even the general consensus I, i've read a lot of articles that people who voted for it and never really spent the time thinking about all the problems that come with it. And, and, and I get your point. I mean, you, you know, it's like... Um, I don't really think we're going to have a lot of problems because we're using the overlay district, which is very const constricted and restrictive, mm -hmm. and, and it's our police department that's overseeing it. So I, I feel like... No, no, no. Uh, I, I it, 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 it really isn't going to be a lot of problems in our town because it's going to be... Our kids are within walking distance of every other town that's going to have it around. So oh, I, I didn't. I didn't mean that. You know, in particular, we in Deerfield are going to have a problem. I'm just saying, in general, you know, residents of right. Massachusetts are now thinking differently of it as but, as but they're I, learning about all these different things. And and like we learned the other night about this whole, um, you know, casual club we'll call them, where people can just, you know, they don't even have to be licensed. You know, it's just. People have an establishment and they say, you know, you want to bring your pot and come here and smoke and, you know, we're really kind of can't control that. So, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of aspects to this that I don't think a lot of people in the beginning thought about. But um, the problem is, again, it's not going to be eliminated in the communities around us. So no, I, you're right. I, you're, I would rather us be out proactive and be on top of things and try to take care of it and then have the money and to, a part of the licensing the part of the licensing process and that's why again I want us the select board to be the licensee or the licensed grantors is um, is educational um, they have to do educational outreach and it's called minor diversion and so I've been thinking about this um, quite considerably and um, I have some ideas I want to work with um, as a board we need to work with Brian Ravish mm -hmm. but just like we have hazardous mitigation plans, it's all hazards now. It's not, you don't specifically do one thing for pl flooding you and then do another thing for, you know, fire or whatever. You do, you do all hazards. And so um, I'm hoping to take this program that I'm sure the companies just have already, like, pre-canned and say, no, that's Can't not going to be enough. We want this kind of program for our kids that is... You know, we work with the schools to have some input from the kids, and we work with our resource officer, and we come up with a like an all hazards kind of program that will allow, you know, the kids have are faced with social media and, and alcohol issues, and so mm -hmm. the idea is to have um, them make decisions, um, c correct decisions at the right time, and and for all stuff, and not just, you know, marijuana, and so. I'm hoping to use that as, okay, this is your program, this is what we want, 
and um, we'll work with you and if we will grant you the license if this is, you know, if you meet our needs. And so I'm actually hoping that we, we can address some of the social media issues that I think, you know, kids are just so stressed out 24 seven with that kind of exposure that just didn't exist when my kids were there, you know, growing up. And, um, and so that we can make something really positive of it. Right. And so well, I, I think I, we're, we're getting off of the topic of what I was speaking to, and, and that is, uh, you know, giving the people a, a choice. And, and I feel that... But, uh, but I feel like it's a false choice, Kip. That's why I'm not in favor I, I of don't, it. Why is it a false choice? Because it's... It's all around. It's already. all around. It's the state. The state's not going to change it. The state isn't going to revote. Well, there are a lot of communities no, that have no, voted. No, there isn't. There really aren't. There really aren't. There's no not communities out here. that voted no, no, there against are. it. There are. There are. There are some, but, not, but very few. Uh, very few compared to, especially in Western Mass. And so, and flying colors. but if if what you believe is going to be true, then it's not going to make any difference. It will go through. Mm -hmm. But I, I, that's what I'm saying. What is the harm of giving the people the choice? You know, if if you believe that the majority of the people are going to vote for it, it's going to go, and we're, we've got the bylaw. We'll have the bylaws in place, and everything's fine. But if, I don't feel like it's it's a good game plan for us as a town. Because you know... So then, I, I, from that I'm saying, you're fearful that it's going to fail. No. No. Well, then if it, why well, not give the people the choice? Because it, I, it gives people... Well, they had a choice. They, they already had the choice. Yeah. Right, that was like, two years ago. And, yeah. but, and that's what I'm saying, that things, people have changed their minds. Well, then, then actually, then it won't be very difficult to get enough people to sign a petition to bring it forward. But do you see how that way of doing it, you force the people, as leaders of the community, we're supposed to work for everybody, mm -hmm. not just a select group. And, you know, even it, like- I'm not even, working and, for a select group. Well, you think about this. this you, we've now opened up 80% of our community to grow marijuana. And that's where it's headed. And that there are going to be people who have nice homes that are now well, that could be. But, but that's, that's not an issue true. I have as well. But, but that's because not you, actually because true. You took because off the five five acres. I don't you know took why off that the happened. five acres, and and also on the APR land, you can't grow, you can't have, um, uh, you know, you can't build buildings and stuff like that. So, I, I Kip, that's not really true because if you look at our protected lands, uh, our maps, you'll show that actually there are very few parcels that. If you put back the five acre minimum and and you look at what's not protected that is actually makes sense to grow, there's not that many parcels. So once again, what does it hurt to give the people the choice? Well, I just feel like, again, it's a false choice that people think that this is going to be a, a way forward it's not a way forward we have to learn we have to be able to deal with this in a in the best way possible but proactive that, way that, it, regardless we're go i agree that our community like every other community is going to have to deal with the issues around marijuana and we'll have good no bad or indifferent and and and, it, and, we're, and we're, we we we're we're going to have these bylaws there but if the community voted you know to opt out of this then but we wouldn't be. We would still have the social issues, but we wouldn't have any of the things in town to deal with that. And you wouldn't have any of the money to educate with it. But we get nothing except for the sales tax, which is three percent, no, right? Of what part, we sell. Money. But, but we don't plus, get anything but from Kip, growing. But part from of the, the licensing process is the, is, the, is the education outreach that is required, and that's why I want us to be the ones involved because we are. Try, attend meetings, we try to educate ourselves, and we want to work with the schools. Okay. And, 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 do you, and I feel more comfortable with us as a board making sure that the program goes through, the, is, is you know, designed to work in the schools and be successful in the schools than rely on other communities to do that at Frontier. I mean, I, well, I, I feel... I think, I, I think that, that all of everything that you speak to is important. And it should already be happening because marijuana and all these drugs have been around here for right. a long time. And we have and a resource officer that's really effective. And, and, and I, I get that. I'm just saying that, you know, and, and I don't want to keep who this. who pays for the resource officer? The town of Deerfield. I get it. And so, I mean, this is, uh, we just want to build on what we are doing already. And, and, and I count on us being the most effective 
group to make sure it can happens. Can we take a week and discuss this, Kip? I mean, we oh, can, you can take as much. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, it, what people feel, and, and I'm just sharing their sentiments, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I, I feel the same way, is that the town as a whole, and this is a, another case where, you know, there's a deadline coming. And if we don't have a, a, a very simple bylaw drafted and have that discussion, it's very simple for this board, the majority of us, to say, sorry, it's just too late. We don't have time. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you know, and that's, that's really just sticking it to them because it's a simple thing. We, we spent a lot of time dealing with pages and pages of these bylaws, and the opt-out one is, a, is just a paragraph. You know, it's a simple thing. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the problem is, again, if, if we opt out, Mm -hmm. Communities around us are not opting out. So, therefore, we have no ability to do the educational program. Sure you do. You still got it, but the taxpayer would pay for it. No, we wouldn't have it. It would be relied on uh, other communities, and I, I don't feel comfortable well, with that. Well, we still could educate our children. We don't... Okay, Kip. We're talking about trying to keep our expenses down. <laughs> So oh, don't who's going to me, pay? Don't talk to me about keeping expenses down. Well, you, the, yes, you don't say no to anything. Us, <laughs> I'm sorry, Karen. No, but, yeah, Kip, that's, that's, that's not true. Of course it is. It is Tell not true. Tell me one thing that you cut out of our budget this year. Everything, money that, you, everything that you came to. Money on like, insurance. You cut down on insurance because you went to some classes, but you didn't say no to anything. Because you, this is a level service budget. So we're, we're promoting the same level of services that we, we have already had this year. So, yes, no, I haven't cut anything yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. No, we didn't cut a resource. if you go forward with this program, you laugh. Well, it would. Yes, we, we, would, we would be reducing the cost of the resource officer. That is absolutely true. But. I, if I could take a week and think about it. I don't want to say no right no, now, but I, I'm leaning no because yeah. I, I think we need to go forward and, and again. And, and, and Trevor, I, I, I agree with you. <laughs> I know. And I don't disagree with you. And I, see, I, I and get your point, Kip. I, you want to give that people another, another chance to say, right. yes, this is definitely what we want. Mm -hmm. But I think they would need to really be educated on what that decision I, is. And, and I don't think we're going to have time to do that. To educate them in that short time. Well, it's, it's an emotional question, and it's like, <sighs> I, I, I don't know. I'm worried that we'd be shortchanging ourselves to, to opt yeah. out. The way we have it right now, we would benefit from the education and the tax money so we can educate and do and, and the security, because Deerfield Police will be securing even if it's in the Waitley shops. <laughs> if it opens up there, guess who's going to be there all the time? And we'll have no tax base to deal with it. Um, and I just, but, and, and, but I yeah. get, and, and I get that. But I what my, my point is, is that if the taxpayers, if they do vote to opt out, they'll understand that they're going to have to, they're going to be paying, you know, our police, which we pay a lot of money for anyways. And, mm -hmm. you know. But I don't think what people won't see that. They'll see that, and they don't, won't know the true impact, because well, honestly, we don't know I what the true impact is. It was very interesting the other night, and I think it happened twice, but I think uh, when you were asked about an opt-out option, you said, well, would you let us be the uh, permitting authority? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it's, now that sounds like a political thing, because it if was, you're willing... It is, in a way. If it you're is, willing to give up, way. you know, if, if, an if opt-out option, if, if you people, could have... If people believed that the opt-out was a real option, then they wouldn't have any problem letting us be the authority, right? And so, I mean, I'm open to that. But on the other hand, we need to be as proactive I, I as worry, possible, and we need I to move ahead. I worry about that because, I, you know, all the meetings I've been to, John Waite has come. Nobody else has come from that board at all to do, I mean, not saying that they don't study on their own, but... You know, MMA, I've gone to many meetings on this, and I, you've done more than I, but um, I've been trying to really dig my head around this, and, and I, you know, we, we hosted the Franklin Select Board Association, hosted the Cannabis Control Commission, one of the members here in town, to get more information about it. None of the planning board members, I'm, I'm not excluding you, but... Um, I worry but you that, didn't come, and it was well, right across too. the street <laughs> right. from your but house. But anyway, so I've been trying <laughs> to educate myself on this, and I don't see that same dedication on that board. And I don't mind, you know, 
plane board. I don't really know what the plane board does as much as I should, but I, I'm okay with them citing the building and all that kind of stuff. Giving the license and granting that, I worry because I don't see that same dedication and knowledge that has been put into here and the same outreach we have with the schools on, on this board. Um, there's just not the same interaction with the other boards in town, and I just feel like the executive board should have that granting authority. But I understand that special permits is usually left to the planning board. Um, this issue I feel differently about, and maybe it's just naivete on my part, and you know, it's certainly not a power grab on my part, but it, it is isn't. some education. It's more responsibility. It is a lot of responsibility, but I just, so that's my only feeling on that. So I, it, it, It's the special permitting that you speak of is just, what you're speaking of is a small part of that site plan I review. Agree. There's I agree. a lot to do and with, you know, the neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the, how to implement the, and the stuff bylaws that I and stuff would like that. Defer so, to the planning board right. because they obviously have the expertise right. on it that and, I don't and, have. And, you know, maybe that's an, that's an option that could be, it could be done together. I where agree with the that. The site plan review needs to be approved, a, approved by, by, you know, the, the planning board and the actual license to operate Right. That is done by the select board. One of the I'm problems. Open to that. One of the totally. problems that's that, that has happened in this town for many years is because that we have uh, these different boards that work in different capacities, and I'll I'll just use the planning board and the uh, zoning board. Uh, somebody might come in to the community that wants to start a business that requires a, um, a special permit, and usually it's the ZBA that grants a special permit. So the applicant will go to the zoning board. And the zoning board will look at everything and say, fine, well, we'll give you our temporary approval, but it's subject to site plan review from the planning board. Correct. So then they come to the planning board, and they, the planning board sets up all these parameters, and it's like, well, who goes first and who sets what rules? And there's always been a constant, I'm not going to say to a, a, a guidance. Bar. There needs to be a guidance in the middle because the applicant gets bounced back and forth between and the two. And frustrating. And if, you know, no. you know, if this board, could work with the planning board to separate the two mm -hmm. so you know each has the same you know that might be a, a better Good compromise thing. but when you have enough members on the planning board who feel strongly about having a, a choice and then having this executive board denying them of that choice mm -hmm. how where's the willingness of them to do anything but, but I guess that's my problem they are taking their personal opinion being anti-marijuana Right. And, and using their personal opinion instead of saying, what's best for the town? How are we going to cope well, for the town? You know, they're true. using their personal opinion. They're, they're not even open to educate themselves or go well, to find out what's, what, what the town is really facing. I mean, people, there was no discussion, Kip. I'm sorry. I've gone to all the planning board meetings on this. And, the, and I stay in right till the end. And the, and the discussion is always, I'm a, personally against marijuana, so it doesn't matter what we do or don't do, it's, it's just a bad. Well, and let, that, let and that is that. That is a wrong attitude well, for, as a, as a regular, regulatory board. You're, you're mistaken, Carolyn, because, and the reason you say that, there are several members on that board that feel extremely personally against marijuana. Mm -hmm. and, and I get that. And, and Keep, I, I actually voted against the marijuana okay. thing. So I am not for marijuana. I don't know why people think that I am like wild for marijuana. I just want us as a town to be ready right. and to make sure that the impact to us is at the very least amount of negative impact and that we maximize every dollar that we get in to actually accomplish something positive for the town, whether it's education to our kids or paying for some of the costs to um, that we would incur, but allowing it to go next door in the neighbor, you know, next neighboring town, without us having any ability to regulate it and 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 no income coming in, and and thinking that we're not going to incur expenses is absolutely crazy, and then to rely on somebody else to reach out and put the educational pro program. Um, into the schools in a manner that is going to be effective, and the implementation is actually going to happen. Uh, I mean, this is what's important, and and we need to be proactive, and we need to be focused on what do we do to make to position Deerfield in the best position possible, and just putting it out there that we're not going to, you know, that we're going to be against marijuana, and that that bus has already left the station, and well, as far is, as I'm concerned. And this is where I feel that you're wrong, is because 
there's nothing wrong with any of us having our own opinions, and that's how we learn as a community because we right. share our experiences I I and we no share problem. our thoughts and everything like that. But regardless of these people on this board who are totally against it, you sat here last night and we worked through eight pages of bylaws and there were some discussions that were good, questions asked that were good, and it's still moving forward. So where I don't see this hard line in the sand that you described from the planning board. The planning board functioned as they were supposed to last night and everything is going forward. Nobody threw, tipped over the t tables and walked out of here. So even though there's strong opposition, they lived up to their end of the bargain. They did their job for the community and, they're, and, they're, and we're gonna have another meeting, I believe next week or the week after, a public hearing. And we'll we're see gonna, how that goes. We're gonna yeah. continue down that road. I hope it does. But the, the, now, getting back to what I said. So if we wait two weeks, you see how it goes, and then you, know, you say, well, you know, I guess we could have put an opt out, but now we don't have time. And they know this is what's, they know what's gonna, they know how you're pushing this agenda. And it's not fair. And, I, and I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just saying that. Well, this we can is vote on it um, next week if you want. Uh, I, you know, I mean, because you said you're not comfortable voting for it no, tonight. No, I'd want we, to talk. Well, let's a little wait. Bit okay, I, sure. We'll, we'll I mean, vote. I don't. I don't have a problem. And, I am and, only one of three votes, Kip. So. And, and I'm not. And, and I personally am not trying to stop this thing. I'm just trying to. I want it to be above board. So you know, if these other people feel that enough of the members of our community don't want this you know, it's gonna come at the end. We're gonna move forward with all of our regulations. It's, it's, put just, them all in place. it's just that how do we educate the, the community? What we're trying to do is to have regulations in force and so then, that we have no social consumption establishments. I think we are all on the same page that but, social consumption establishments are not what we want in town. It's a danger, it's a public safety issue, and it attracts whatever and so I think that's what we want to do and and by not by not educating people that if you if you just say no it could be right next door and you've you've eliminated the possibility of of blocking it in our town and it just I'm just worried that we're not educating people properly. People will be too emotional about this. So it would have How to be, that? but it would have to be the opt out would have to be done at town meeting and 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 in a, on a ballot. It, well, first, it actually, no, it has to be on the ballot. It has to be on the ballot. That's it's that's not a fun. town meeting thing. It's a ballot. Well, issue. no, there, there's at the town meeting there has to be a bylaw for that, and that's the part. The bylaw no, to opt. Yes, I don't think so. That's what Adam said, and that's it had the part. There has to be an opt out bylaw. There has to be a bylaw, and that way, but it's it's kind of like a dormant document. We go through the process. We adopt. I thought it approve. had to be a ballot because it was a ballot issue. It is a ballot issue. The, the bylaw doesn't say yes or no. The bylaw is just all to allow the ballot issue, and so everything goes forward. But and so put the ballot place. issue, we can't even do the ballot issue then until after the town meeting. The, when we go to vote, yeah. But you can't. The ballot has to be out because you have early voting and stuff. So, if you do the ballot at uh, the opt-out ballot at April town meeting, then you can't even vote on it until November. Right. I, the ballot's already printed um, by the time we go to town meeting. Well, you, you, it would be printed already. It would be printed ahead of time. Yeah, but you can't, it, you have to have that passed at town meeting. So you, it, it, the timeline is incorrect. See, this is exact, let's move on. But if you think about that, Kip, how would you, how would you, do it logistically. The lawyer explained it at the meeting, but this is this is the opposite. No. This is why people get upset. No, but I'm, I, I educate me. I'm trying to I'm trying yeah. to work through this I mean, on, my, on my mind. How can you your ballot is our people are already like doing um, absentee ballot and all when that kind of stuff. When do they early stuff. vote? When do they early vote? What like, they would do? I don't know what the how they how would soon print. It is. They would the print up part. the bylaw, mm -hmm. just like with the other one. We you know we talk about it at a public meeting. And then it's, it's put as an article on our town warrant. The ballots are printed up with that question on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we pass all of our bylaws, and then we, when people go to vote, they, if they choose to opt out, they choose to opt out. If they don't, they don't. So at the end of that election, if not enough people voted for it, all our bylaws are in place and we go down that road. But I, th I think, I'm not sure if that's, cur if you can do well, that. 
the way you're talking about. Well, let's take the I, weekend. We'll, and do we'll a find out the correct information because, because I, I want to know the I think that's logistics what Adam of that. To us. I think you're. Right. I heard him talking about yeah. it, but I, I just, did too. Logistically, but I, I want to see how that plays out. Yeah, I think it has to be a ballot question, but you can't put it on the ballot until it passes town meeting, and the ballot is already printed. Before you can print it, you can be on the ballot before it, before it's approved. You can be on the whether you use it or not is a different. Thing. Yeah, I wonder. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Well, so we can let's find do, out. Let's do a little research. We on can that find this out, week. and then we can talk about it some more. Okay. Um, it's good I'm discussion sorry. I'm done. Anyways. No, it's good discussion. Um, yeah, it's good to have a discussion. I'm I'm not open to. I mean, I'm not against discussing it. Honest. Okay. Well, I I think that the members of the board, they 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 feel like they discussed it too, and and all they wanted was this choice which we kind of talked about several weeks, several months ago, and it's, they and only I, see part I'm, of it going forward, not the I'm, whole thing. And I'm talking about choice, too. Who, who is the granting authority? We haven't had much choice on that and much input. So anyway, Time for negotiations. Um, uh, we, uh, town commons. I, I actually, Paul Chapley was wonderful. He spent a lot of time um, talking and working with me on this. Who's and, Paul Chapley, can you just... From Chapley Gardens. Oh, yes. Yep. Um, they right. do a lot of fountain work. And he, so he was really nice. <sighs> he said that this fountain issue is a lot more complicated. And if we shut off the water, um, then we really should remove the fountain because it would cost so much money to replace a pump. You have to heat the water in the wintertime. And um, you... Uh, if you're doing like a, this is a gravity fed now. Yeah. So what I was wondering is maybe we can discuss with the water department that if there's any kind of drought conditions or conditions where there was. The, can you know, we do a temporary the, shut off? Yeah, we could do a temporary shut off. But Paul is correct. We would and be investing a lot of money in rebuilding the um, the whole fountain and and but. And it and I just a, having a it go, and I, having it a dead fountain to me is so sad. So we would have to remove it, and um, so it seems like the easiest thing is to talk to the, keep talking to the water department and have some kind of policy with them that if a res if the reservoir reaches some because I was I would I thought the DEP was behind this whole thing, but apparently not. Where is it coming from? I I don't know. I don't know. The water, the water district. Yeah, they, but who, they want to who at the water them. district? The uh, commissioners. They just want to do it as a, a water saving thing because it's tens of thousands of gallons every year, maybe even into hundreds of thousands of gallons because it's a half inch pipe that just runs 24 7. I'd like to find another way. I just think it's. I know. Yeah, I know. Easy not to have a fountain but in the town. You know, it's been you there can, for 100 years. I, I mean, that fountain is the way it was made with stones and stuff. You could remove it. You can buy like an aluminum fountain that looks tarnished. It's that green, uh, greenish look, and you could just put it there. I mean, yes, every fall you'd have to, you know, reach in and pull the pump out, but because uh, it wouldn't, you couldn't do it in the winter time. It'd wreck the pump unless you heated the water, like you said, and that's another whole expense. I, know. I don't so, know. It just. Yeah. I know. So we need. It's not going to be like. We're going to be able to put something in there for. I, I, Paul, Paul said, you know, you got to really think about fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, not seventy-five hundred, which is what. To okay. redo it, so it's yeah. a re, re, just a constant yeah. filter kind of and thing. And something that either you pull it or you heat it, and that versus it just flowing. And, and right then out. one of the things is, is when you pull it, are you draining it enough? Is it a hundred percent drained? You might have issues you have to every blow it spring. Out. Yeah, um, uh, so it's. It's pretty complicated. I just don't want to lose it. I know. I really don't. I know. I Me mean, either. Um, and, but I don't want a dead one either. So, I mean, that's sad. Seriously, walk by, a, you know, leaves and trash. and Oh, my gosh. It would be terrible. So we've, it will cost us some money one way or the other. But um, I'm thinking that we can continue Are, discussing it, at the moment. It, it, has anyone talked to the water department no, yet? No. Are they dead set against this? Is this a proposal no, by I, them? They just want to kind of give us a heads up, or I mean, are they definitely? I talked with Roger briefly about it, and um, you know, I, I, I will go to one of their meetings and talk with them. Well, let me know when know. they are. I'd like to. I think that um, you know, I, it, 
their concern has some merit, but it does. On the other hand, I, get that. I mean, I don't. We don't really have water shortages around here. And is there I any way to conserve other ways? If the town says, "Hey, look, you can you can either watch your tap, or you can," you well, know, we could stop watering the ball field. Over uh, here, something but, like that. I mean, or I've, I've been here many times during the pouring rain, and those sprinklers <laughs> is going off. If so, there's I mean, a rain sensor, we can put on that. Versus, yeah. you know, I mean, just for the town people to kind of have a yeah. say on. Or do they not care about the fountain? My guess is yeah. people care or want it yeah. to be there. I think people are really I think think they it's would. pretty. You know, but too. that's again, that's my opinion. But. So I think did did Wendy want us to vote on this that we would that we are for or well, against shutting well, it down we, or we did, were, so that she can send a letter to well, the Well, I mean that's on our list of stuff. So the whole idea was does this move forward and I'm I'm just saying that based on oh, the work the, that I Paul yeah, Paul I'm did, I, I don't think we can really move this forward as I just wanted to vote that we were against shutting it oh, off okay. and to send well, a why letter don't you to make the, I'll make a motion that we vote um, to send a letter to the water department that we were strongly against or against them um, shutting off the fountain and is there ways that we could meet to have discussions of other water conservation to offset the use here or just to continue the conversation to see what can be done. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, South Deerfield study report. So I'll go over this real quick. This is, um, we're, Wendy and I have not had a chance to spend enough time together to get this done and sent to you, but this is a, just a draft of the South Deerfield Commercial Center. Um, so we've had that for a little while? Do we've we had this for, uh, this is the first time we've printed you a copy of it. Oh, okay, um, so I don't have it. And this is really a culmination of kind of pulling in all kinds of, this was a grant we got from FERCOG yeah. to study economic development and what we can do with the empty parcels in town and you know our, our ideas for Elm Street and, and, all, and then a, a large driver of this was to kind of get this completed and then work towards the complete streets which I think I don't know, Wendy's gonna talk about that. She has a first reading for us tonight on that as well. So this was a study that, um, just to kind of a background on this, we, uh, we brought the FERCOG in with a grant money to kind of study this, study the spots, and then interview um, different players in town and different business owners and, and people that own buildings on Elm Street in different parts of town. We had a, a meeting here one Saturday morning for several hours. and. Um, just kind of get people's feedback, how they feel about the town, what, what could we do to help them improve their buildings, um, what they'd like to see. And, and one of the items that came up was to kind of extend that, that parking lot near the old Sugarloaf Market further down, almost to Berkshire Brewing, so we could have more, um, even just with TRG for now or something like that, instead of paving the whole thing, maybe have some benches there and we'd have pedestrian path from you know, there's a lot of cars that go back and forth just to park there, but if we did some permitting parking for the people, residents in there, we could pull them off of those back parking lots and, and Main Street, park them in those lots back there, and we could open up one of those ways for just pedestrian crossing, so people could come to down, park in there, walk to the other things. This would tie into our redoing the sidewalks and some lighting, and so it's the start of that, of getting these ideas together and working with Complete Streets to kind of get grant money to do this stuff. And um, we, Wendy had some questions. We were gonna go over this together. We just haven't had enough time to do it. We've talked about it, but we haven't gone through, you know, section by section. And, and then we, we send our questions and revisions back to uh, Jessica at the FERCOG, and then she puts out the final report. And the final report actually has bigger maps and all. There's some maps in the back here showing you know what's residential what's you know commercial and then she has other ones talking about the spots that are open there there are photos in here she actually did a lot of work and uh, there are photos of the town owned property and and then photos of vacant property there's really not a ton of vacant property mm -hmm. in in the Deerfield Center um, I think it was five properties at the most um, so it was good work just starting that process you know we're talking about the planner and all and position and so each, each partial is kind of listed of what it is, and th this is the lot, I think, um, here that, you know, the town owns that we yep. could extend, you know, and then create some, some pathway Walkway. behind yeah. there. So just kind of just wanted to give okay. you a first reading, a draft of it, and that Wendy and I work on this, and hopefully for draft. next mm -hmm. meeting we can... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and there's... I guess maybe you don't have... A, I don't know, there you should be a copy there for you somewhere, too. Maybe it's in here. Yep, oh, at the back, there. There you go. 
Thank so you, you could sorry. read through that, and if you have any comments or whatever you want to give us too, and then we can send that back to them. Um, but, you know, we keep, we've talked about this a couple of meetings, saying that we're getting together and do this, and we haven't really, but we wanted to give you Actually, I, that ability maybe, to Maybe, um, could you guys read through this and um, get your, it. oh, okay. Yep. Can you give any comments to Wendy? Because yes. our, our seeds and eads meetings have been canceled twice because of snowstorms, and okay. it's actually next Wednesday. All right. And, and the reason why, um, uh, if we can get comments up there, then it's part of the becomes part of the meeting. Great. And uh, and then that will move forward a little bit, and it you know gets yeah, bumped every little spot. Yeah, it gets bumped ahead to the list. Okay. Of, of projects that you know are supported by the county Great. group. So sure. Um, so I'll you get never know. You never days. know when the opportunity might come for some money. So right. if it's in the line, then and right. everybody's had a chance to look at it up there and voted on it, then. You know, our okay. the committee. Well, I'll talk with Wendy and about I'll, that. And too. I'll make sure that um, whatever comments we have on this, we get hmm. up there um, for that meeting next week. I have a question. What's the difference between household income and fam family income? Good question. I don't know. Because it should be, well, I'm not, I mean, uh, if it said household income versus single or yeah, something like that, but I just family. didn't know the difference between a household income or a family income. I don't know. Unless they don't live in the there same house. There must be a description know. here. This is a U.S. Census Bureau. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. There must be some description. You know, unless well, it. Wow. The family income is more than the household income. So. Right. So I wonder if it includes well, kids, kids as that, well that yeah, live kids, at home. And they make money, but they don't. They make more than the parents. Yeah, and they don't <laughs> contribute. Right. That sounds well, familiar. That's, I, I actually Get don't your know own house Kip. and pay some taxes. <laughs> I know. I actually don't know, Kip. It's huh. like that TV commercial says, you know, in a lot of different societies, that kids live at home till they're 40 or more. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, okay, so, so we'll handle that for, um, and if you don't yes. mind, for next week, because yep. that will be good. I'll take advantage of the rescheduling of I'll the meeting, and so we just will be able to talk about it at the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Wendy's going to do the complete streets when she's out. Okay. Did you the, have C the, CIPC? Uh, the CIPC is is we have one more meeting on uh, next Tuesday, and then we will have. Um, I think we're going to have the our public hearing on our, our meeting on the 14th of March. So we should have it pretty well wrapped up. Okay. Um, uh, we're almost done, so that's good. Um, we have the budgets tonight. There was a couple more budgets. Yes, I but saw that. But before we do that, um, Yap Molinar want, would like to be appointed to the Agricultural Committee. So. Um, when are they meeting? Do you know? Well, I'm the hoping that they will meet because, you know, we have the. Before our next meeting? Uh, before the noise. Um, cannons? Get, noise cannons, yeah. Do you. Um, do you think they'll meet before our next meeting? No, no, but. He wanted to. Uh, he um, sent an email, and so if we, if we could do that, that would be great. Uh, um, were there? I thought uh, I didn't know there were that many opens in one because didn't we just appoint Jay? Yeah. No, this is the last opening. Oh, okay. We're just trying to get this committee active. Yep. Uh, before we start having complaints. Um, do you, so, so my only hesitation is that um, I just. Well, it just wasn't on the agenda, and that we didn't have. Um, I don't have anything. Oh, oh, I, Wendy can print out the email if okay. you want. Uh, um, can you we want talk me? to her when she comes out? Yeah, okay. yeah, we can do that. Great. Do you want to go do the budget then? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the only thing that I saw that came out was uh, well, the Tilton Library redid their budget, which came down. Well, uh, we have to, um, to I don't think that we voted the OPEB budget. I, I held it out because I, right, we didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure. If we were waiting for that. The dollar amount changed, though, didn't it? Yes, it, it changed. It did. It went to um, 35000 to 278 We changed it from 2% of free cash, which was, we just threw that out, to 4% of um, the, health. the health costs. So this year, um, 
this year coming up is 35, and this was approved by the, by the Finance Committee? It's, um, I have a call number. No, because we, we not you? funded it. We did last year, didn't we? I, I thought we did, but. Yeah. We did 10 know. last year. I know. So I don't know why it doesn't have a number. Where? So, you know, usually it has an account number. Oh, where, where did you find that? I think it's, it's just a fund. It's Oh, it's all the way in the back. Yeah. Uh, I put it under 11. Or I think it's under 11. Okay, I see. The last thing in the book. Oh, it is under 11. Yeah. How come it doesn't have an account number? I think it, I don't know. Is it a different kind of, it, because it's an investment fund versus you know a, what? an actual this account? Is, um, how come this is 36,480? That was before. That was the two, that was the, uh, that was the 2 percent of free cash. Oh, okay. Versus the uh, four percent of health insurance. Okay. And I the thing so we're gonna, this already. Did they not? I, I don't know. It's still it's Should still not. Um, well, it doesn't matter. All right. Well, I'll make a motion to approve the OPEB funding for FY two thousand nineteen at thirty five thousand two hundred seventy eight dollars. At thirty five thousand. Which is four percent of the. Uh, previous year's health insurance cost of the employees of Deerfield. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? Well, no? the only discussion I have is how do we find out, because here it says 25, and I know this is old, but I'm sure that we funded it last year. We did for 10,000. For 10,000 last 10, year. 10,000 last, last year. Last year. I don't know why it doesn't have an account but number, but we did do 10,000. Because remember, I, I had wanted to do 25 last year. Because 10 wasn't. So, it was, so we did 10 and we're doing 36 this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 30, 35, 35 to 278, which you second. Because now we have a policy which we approved. Yeah, we didn't policy. have a policy. We're just right. picking random numbers, which are still a drop in the bucket. But this is this is a true policy. A, a policy for our actuaries when they come in. Um, is there any further discussion on this? No. Nope. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we approved it. Um, tonight, um, two twenty-one. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll try to get an account number on this. I don't. I don't know why we don't have that. I thought because it's an actual trust or like a trust fund, it doesn't have an account number. It still would have an account. It was. Yeah. I For all the others, like the um, Oliver Trust. Yeah, they have. That's a, a, they still have. But that's numbers. a budget, but not the actual fund itself. Or do we not have the access to the fund itself? Uh, you know that whole list in the yeah, back of our financials? See, see right here. The Oliver Smith trustee is an yeah, account but number. What I mean is is on the end of our financials, all of these funds don't – oh, I guess they, I see what you mean. They have a 911 or something like that. Right. See here? See here's the Oliver well, Trust. Where's the OPEP? Is 149 5110. Let's see. It's not – I don't know why it's – Maybe we didn't do anything with the 10, and we did it, I'm, kept I'm sure it somewhere we else. 10 last year. Oh, I there that was no trust, though. We didn't actually institute a trust. So that Maybe money's that was... there, but it's not actually invested in a trust like with Bartholomew or something like that. Oh, okay. That might be why. She's been holding it to do that this year. Okay. Barbara might know that. Yeah. Or Brenda. Obviously. Well, we can track it down. I'm, I'm sure we voted 10,000 last year. Yeah. Because that Definitely. was a big, huge fight. But we, even but get we 10, just 000. voted the trust paperwork last yes. week, so that Maybe might be that's why. why. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, other than that, uh, there was the library. What other things did we? Well, the library. The, we have a new library. Um, uh, Town office building. Uh, wastewater. Treatment expenses. I think. When you guys get updated ones, you just chuck the old ones. Yeah. Yes. Go. What you do go by the date. Yeah. Go by yeah. the date, and you keep the the latest ones in your book. So it gets quite confusing. But so so when we when, when I don't see numbers like for the, the capital requests and stuff, it's only because the finance committee hasn't um, voted on them yet. So that's well, why like they won't the, appear in here. The capital requests. Well, both from you know the stabilization oh, and stuff like that. Oh, it's because we haven't done, we have nobody's voted Four anything minutes. yet. Yeah. Okay. We haven't we haven't we don't have the schools yet. So mm -hmm. what you do is you bring all the um, budget numbers together, then you okay. see what you have, okay. and then what you have to cut to get below your two and a half percent, and then that will also. 
determine what we do for stabilization because you have to then make a decision of how you, how much you're going to use yes. to offset for from free cash. Yep. Um, that's why you do these budgets individually, and then mm -hmm. you totally do a total, and then you say, okay, well, what are we going to do? I mean, what's the total? Right. So I think the new ones that came out were, were the Tilton Library. I'm trying to remember them. They were Tilton Library. The Tilton yeah. Library one is a... Um, it was wastewater expense, I think, was the other one. And t Oh, town office expense, I think it was. General insurance was... was we voted that last week, but that's a new sheet of uh, 61000 Then there was... Excuse me. Excuse me. What was the other one? Do you do you want um, the Tilton Library um, to come to talk to us? I don't. I listened to their. Um, I listened to the finance committee meeting when they were there. Um, I know that they reduced their budget based on a meeting they had with their trustees. Um, so I'm okay. I'm okay. I don't okay. have any they, questions. Their increase was just because of labor costs. Right. Insurance. Yeah, they were actually paying, right, they were kind of accounting for what they were actually paying people instead of having it come out of the trust, I think. Because the way they explained it is they try to run that, what if, if they're going to add some hours, they try to run it and pay it through the trust and make sure that they're getting the response from the community and they feel like it's worth going ahead before they go ahead and put it on the, their budget. Okay. As far as I know. All right. Um, was do you contract want to, do you services want... done too? Yeah. No. Contracted services was given to us too, but I don't know if it's complete yet. Um, I, I'm not sure if all the numbers are... Uh, this not, we don't have a number for the... Peg? Peg. But we usually put some money aside for that, right? Yeah. Um, well, why don't we go back to the Tilton Library? Do you want to just yep. make a motion on the Tilton Library? Where is that? That's, um... Oh, here it is. Okay. So I make a motion to approve the budget for 2019 for the Tilton Library at $181,706. Um, I'll second the motion. Okay. Is there any further discussion on that? Uh, only my... What did you say the price? That amount was 181. 181, 706. Mine says 705. Is that what you have in the front? You have what in there? 705. And that's not. Oh. I'm not going to argue over a dollar. Yeah. Huh. We could. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, let's, that's let's what I have on the sheet. I'll tell you what. I'll give you 50 cents, and you give me 50 <laughs> cents, and we'll good. donate a book. We'll bring a book. Okay. Um, well, do you want to give the one that's in here then? Yes. The, well, no. Okay, so we'll do this one that's. Well, we want to do no. We'll do the the one that's dollar, on the sheet. Uh, the on the sheet that's, that was submitted. Okay, okay. so that's one hundred eighty-one thousand seven hundred six. Seven hundred six, not seven hundred five. Correct. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Hello. Hi there. Hey, stranger. Where were you? You missed all the um, fun. Well, I was having fun with the finance <laughs> committee. Um, I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense, does it? <laughs> I'm not going to go there. No. Well, um, we're, we uh, skipped over your f administrator's report and, and the complete, um, the street complete, street. complete streets. And um, we don't have the um, email from Yacht Molinar for the Egg Commission. Yeah, I wrote back saying, Kurt Trevor, was, when we, is there a need to do it tonight? I mean, well, do you have a meeting coming up? Because I'll put it on the next agenda if you'd okay. like. Okay, it's just in two weeks. Yeah, but if they're not meeting, it, I, I'm trying to. Um, okay, no, that's I want fine. you know. Um, okay. I just. I told I, him what he submitted was fine because he wanted to know if we wanted something. Okay. More. And what, then you'll so. write up a sheet that we typically sign off on, right? Yeah, appointment list. Yep. Yeah, no, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that we have a full committee and that someone is willing to be chair before, um, and maybe we can send out have. Since the meet committee isn't completely constituted, maybe we can have John send out that letter again. About the air cannons? About the air cannons. For the farmers. Uh, are we at that point again? Yes. It's pretty okay. close. Yes. It's March, almost. 
Okay. But they typically do that. Is someone that taking first harvest of corn, or is there other? Well, what happens is you plant, you're planting the you seed, the seed, and we want to make sure that okay. it's All right, what as far away from there? residential right. as possible. Mm -hmm. you, you need to let farmers know that. Give it. That oh, I see. It is what a concern. Yeah. So if Still, you're going to plant corn, plant it in this field and not that field versus. Well, if they have a choice. Right. If they're going to use the noise cannons, they need to try to place it away from the if residential possible. area as best as possible. Okay. Did, when I asked before if that increase for the library was just the uh, health insurance and wages, that's all that it really was, isn't it? Yeah. I, it was wages, I believe. Because the last couple of years, the percentage that they increased, in the, and that's kind of what I go after a lot of these debates, is that, you know, this past year, that increase is 7%, and last year it was 6 and the year before it was 5 So, you know, these dollar amounts keep adding, you know. Do you know what I'm saying? 4 uh, to nothing, then 4 and a half, or 4, and then 2 and a half, and then last year well, was I just, 5 I just did that. I subtract the difference to see what percentage it is of what it went up. You know, and it went from 157 to 161 to 169 to 181. That last increase was 11000 Seven hundred thirty-three dollars. No, right. I just keep yeah. track of the percentage that goes. I up. see what you and mean. This is what yep. I, I. This is what I. A lot of times I, I say, well, you know, it's, and I'm not talking about this particular budget. It's mm -hmm. all of them. You know, because the dollar amount is so large, when you have like a three percent or a five percent, you know, the dollar amount keeps growing and growing. Mm -hmm. So the percentage over the last year's increase is continually growing. I'm yeah. sorry, I don't know what really what finally shook out on this budget, but I do know that um, were you part of the conversation when they discussed how Sharon had been sort of making her budget work by yeah. covering things with with uh, trustees funds and mm -hmm. um, and the way you know the requirements that the state has for purchasing of books and sort yes. of trying to really reflect in this budget what the staff is uh, staffing costs have been because I don't think it's been accurately. Uh, I see what you poor mean. trade and and They've been funding out of the trust. But I'd rather she trust. explain that than me. <laughs> but that's my understanding mm -hmm. of oh, and, why and that you you know that will be because that she gets into the state minimum budget. Mm -hmm. We have to have a minimum budget of 159. Yep. 313 in order to get, state aid, uh -huh. to, oh, to get state aid. Library aid. aid. So you have to make sure you spend enough money to get aid. That's interesting. All the yeah, it's a requirement of all the libraries. Um, and be open a certain number of hours as well. Mm -hmm. Which we ha have, they have, they're open a lot more hours than they have been. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the adding programs. Um, I do, can I say something so I don't forget what we were, they were just talking about, looking at the overall budget, and um, they hadn't voted yet on the planner position, but they were talking about uh, perhaps having an override to support that position. And I just wanted to let you know that. You don't have to respond, I'm just, Sending okay. that it's Thank it's you. on it's it's on tape on another meeting so I just thought I would bring that who, the conversation. Who, uh, who wrote that song? It's only just begun. I gotta get that. <laughs> who will be playing that a lot? Cole Porter. Cole Porter. I don't know. I made that. <laughs> um, so, do you want to give your town administrator's now. report, Wendy? Um, Let's see, what else did I, do you have in, anything in your pile that you didn't have on the agenda was what oh, I was going to talk the only about. Thing was we, we didn't do the complete streets. Okay, well, I had hoped to get that all edited and presented to you tonight, but I'll have that for you. I'm hoping to get, oh, get that done. I, if I nobody believe, interrupts me tomorrow, I can get that done. I, I don't think we were meeting next Wednesday, were we? Your no. next meeting, yeah, for your next meeting. I'll Which get would be that the to you. No, Wednesday. I don't think you are. No, no I do no, not have you um, for that. I, I don't think we were going to meet the 28th. Um, so the only other thing I wanted to bring up is the um, FERCOG is, is running a tabletop exercise of the four meetings that we, workshops that we've had, you know, mm -hmm. on administrative paperwork, volunteer reception, um, center opening. I'd love to do department. that if I could. I can't do it, but I would love to. Okay. <laughs> I think it I'm, I'm just saying it's March. Oh. Oh. Thank you. The March, it's March 1st. I thought you were saying we have a workshop for the carpenters. And I'm like, my brain's going. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, yeah. All those, all those workshops. It's that late. Okay. That I was trying to get, every, you know, the, like the paperwork one, which is actually pretty serious. But mm -hmm. anyway. So when are they doing that? March 1st. 
And during the day, probably? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 it's at 5.30. Oh. Actually. The drill. So I didn't know if you, if anyone, if you either, I'm, I'm going to go. You're going to go. I'm just trying to get Lori. Tabletop. Yeah, it's just a tabletop. Um, Where is that? At the fur oh. At the, and, and what it is is you, you can practice all the stuff that we learned. And you know, all the paperwork I've been giving you, every workshop I've been There'll be, um, select board members and administrators and EMDs yeah. from all the towns. There's about 30 or 40 people um, there, and, and you, so you sort of bring you know, like a little group with you, and we practice as a group. So it would probably be, I don't know how many people, 60 people. I bet a lot of Conway people show up. Yeah, no, the Conway people have been really... Um, yeah. they, yes. The, because it's, you know, yeah. if it wasn't for Tricia being there, I didn't you know, it was know risk communication, happen. risk communication, right. and all that kind of stuff. So, actually, Conway's had four or five people each mm -hmm. workshop, different, and some of them have been a little bit different, you know, different ones. But right. they, as a town, they were probably the most represented. Yeah. They were pretty crazed. Yeah. But anyway, so all those things we're talking about, and um, you know, the templates for the you know, uh, events and all. And, the, and they, so they give you a couple scenarios and you just practice your reaction. Okay. But anyway, so I forgot, I, I forgot that we weren't meeting next Trevor, week. How's so this? I wanted to... the, the other thing you, um, I, on my report, um, I probably am going to have to go to Florida Saturday and I hope to be back Wednesday, but I, that's, you know, I'm, I'm going to, it's all happening all very quickly. So, um, and I, been here for two very long days, and I'm, mm -hmm. I need to leave a little early on Friday, and I'll probably come in around 11 tomorrow, but I'll post the office and I'll send emails there because I'm the only one here this week. Right. So I, I've been trying. I've been here by 9 every morning, including Monday, which was a holiday. <laughs> I didn't yeah. come in that early, but I stayed that late. So at any rate, um, I just want to let you know about the office coverage and my schedule. Okay. So, um, okay. Yeah, we do have the... Um, the uh, here the not the hearing the bidders conference here next Thursday at ten for anybody who might submit a proposal for the parcel CRFP. Um, there are other things that have come up and I've sent them on to people so there might be other uh, we might have something so we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, I incur I actually if in case I'm not here I would really like if you could what be time here. Is it? ten o'clock on Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Uh, that's the first. Yes, sir. Yeah. Same, same day as the tabletop. I'm, I'm same day as Frontier's thing. thing. Uh, what? I'll be at a sales meeting all day. Um, yeah, yeah, site briefing at 10 here. Um, uh, Andrea Miner will be here from Furcock, who's helped us Andrea prepare. Woods? Woods Miner. Yeah. Miner Woods. I, she doesn't work. Woods. Andrea Woods. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I think we were talking about uh, 10 the same person. right here. And yep. be prepared, perhaps, if people are here, to do a site visit from here. Um, and that is, um, and then the proposals are due on the 15th. They'll be opened at, up at Furcock offices at okay. 3 o'clock. Um, also, let's see, next week... Um, I guess there's a CIPC meeting. You know that on yeah. Tuesday night. Um, it's our last I, meeting. I actually have a conflict with your meeting on the eighth. Um, okay. So letting you know that. Who's more important? My mother's taxes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and mine. Um, That's important. Correct. Federal government. Um, we don't care about them anymore. Okay. Because <laughs> we're the most important government. On the day before, on the 7th, I am having um, acuity through the State Department of Revenue. They're, they do these free IT checks, and I got us up on the list to have that done. I know Bernstein had it done a few months ago, and, and uh, this, this is paired with that grant that we got, that IT grant, and it's showing that our, we're continuing to make the effort so we can keep and use that grant at some point that, that meets their needs, meets their goals of the program in which it was awarded to us. Okay. So um, I think we're pretty far along, way ahead of other communities on our MVP work, Carolyn. I know. And everybody. So I'm hoping we can um, move forward toward certification and then applying for grants. And I don't know if you know, have heard more 
you were going to talk to um, Carrie or something? Yeah, the, the, the criteria hasn't really changed on the, I mean, the problem is the, so much silt, it's silted in so much, it's a dead zone. Um, so that puts us on a lower priority for the culvert replacement. Yeah, program. for ha okay. for habitat enhancement. All but right. um, I told Carrie that because we went through the MVP program, the whole idea was to work with the state to get that cleaned out. Mm -hmm. why, and why, why do you keep calling it a culvert replacement? They're not going to replace the culvert. Uh, we would rebuild it with the open bottom. We put an open bottom on Millville Road. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, but they would clean it out, and therefore you'd have water come. You you have the ability of the water to come. It's Both habitat directions. enhancement, so you water would come in and be able to go out easier once you've cleaned that area. And um, I told her that I felt pretty strongly that the Mosquito District would make that a priority area to get that cleaned out, so it would help with the permitting. And she said that that was probably um, would be very helpful. That would put us bump us to the top. Well, if that's something you plan, because that definitely should be done July, August, when it's dry, you know, it won't be a big problem. You try and go in there, it's wet, and you, that's where it's a mess. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to get, because the Mosquito District hasn't been voted in, and because we don't have it, been determined that that is an area of disease, then, um, you know, a residual pool of disease, even though we've trapped it. We're, we're showing that there, it, it is. You so um, hopefully we can get that cleaned out, but it wouldn't happen this year. We, we wouldn't be eligible for this year's round. Mm -hmm. But there aren't there other grant programs that the oh, MVP yeah, certification helps us with? Well, oh yes. Yeah. I, I mean, but we aren't certified. Hazardous mitigation. We should be, we should yeah. be certified, but I don't think we're gonna make a certification before this, cool. I think it's April deadline. Because oh, yeah. it opens up in March, and you have to have it apply for it. By, right. I mean, I'm still going to apply for it, because we already had the information from last year when mm -hmm. we applied. And it, it's worth to keep, right. you know, we keep hassling them, yeah. and you They'll don't feel bad away. for us one year right. and say, OK, they've, they've been trying. <laughs> Can I make this? Sure. I'm going to try and get to the um, Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'll, I just want to say one last thing. I sent you an email saying uh, they rescheduled the Public hearing that yes. required by bylaw. Did you already talk about this? No. So your meeting on the on March 14th will be um, 5:30. Um, a joint meeting at 5:30. Public hearing mm -hmm. on the capital improvement plan. It's required by our bylaws. Um, so, and then that that will kind of be how you kick off the meeting, and then you can go into the rest of your meeting from there. Yeah. Okay. okay? Yeah. So get proposed that. And then I just wanted to read this notice. Uh, to the Town of Deerfield Select Board public meeting the Deerfield Public Tree Inventory and Townwide Ecological Assessment um, March 13th uh, 2018 at, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Is this a public? Yeah, they, they, I've been trying to get them to write, reach out more because so you write something up that the board can read Thank at you. the meeting tonight. So, Can we put this on the website? Yes. yes. Great. Okay. Um, um, next week. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, um, Mike, are you here for public comment? Wonderful. How are you? Doing well. How about good. yourself? Doing good. So, Wendy, you just stated you responded to an email today regarding someone's letter of interest today, the same day. Carolyn, you have twice brought up appointments and tried to appoint someone without Trevor seeing the letter of interest and qualifications. I sent my letter of interest and qualifications in over three weeks ago. I have followed up twice. Why have I not received a response? Um, I did our, respond to you. And our lawyer, what our lawyer said yesterday, or advised us to say, at this, all he said to say is at this time we're not going to entertain um, your nomination or okay. your, your appointment. Okay. No reason you couldn't have sent that to me? Um, well, I kind of figured you'd show up. But yeah. also, uh, we Were just got, I got the information. I, I just got the information last night. He was here for the marijuana public hearing, and so we discussed it with him. Could I have a copy of that? Email? Uh, there's, no, there's no email. There's he, no there's email. A, he verbally told me um, that, was, that 
to give you that answer. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there any other? I know you want to leave. So is there anything else that you wanted to bring up? Probably, but I was focused there. <laughs> no. Okay. I, I had it all here. I put it out for you. Yep. Sorry I didn't join you earlier. I guess the question is what kind of minutes um, did you vote? Yes, we voted uh, that's, the minutes. So if you would, okay, so the vote, just let me know if someone would follow up with me tomorrow. Um, I guess the only other thing I want to mention that's kept me busy is we're trying to get our bill, our billing with the new River Road uh, facility up and out. I've been hearing from other communities. It's just, you know, usual Eversource blanks, the company and the company. Did you reach out yeah, to Yeah, we're getting John there. At all? John who? O'Rourke. No, we're, I think we're good. They finally sent it, and then I called, and that was the wrong number, and they said, we'll call you tomorrow morning, so... We're, I, I do believe we're close now. I do. And really all it is is getting the billing correct. And we'll, we'll start getting the credits for that. So I was waiting for Ken Garber to get back to me, which he did today. But I'm just, it's these kinds of things that just go on and on and on that take up a lot of time and following up and responding to. So. Um, is this supposed to be for me? Well, I, I thought you might be interested... Um, this is what we're supporting at Homeland Security, or I brought it forward to support. And Meg Birch is the head nurse for Union 38. And um, she a frontier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, no, she's at Conway, I think. I don't remember. Yeah, I knew her before she was a nurse. So that um, was exciting anyway, to see she's her. She's also name. board of health member from um, Conway. And um, so, anyway, it's very exciting because. I feel like if we support this for the, the nurses and get the nurses um, um, interested in, in emergency preparedness, they would be a key for us in like the family unification plan and some of the other um, more complicated things that you, we try to do through the schools. And also um, they would be key in our public outreach for, um, you know, the marijuana education. And um, did you so talk about that tonight at all? Yes, we actually talked about okay. it quite a lot. And, okay. Because if someone can write up something, I think if you decided anything relative to the bylaw, uh, what your thoughts are on follow up items relative to the discussion by the planning board last night, I uh, could, I would follow up. I do have some questions for Council Trevor and I were talking earlier relative to the special permit granting authority and um, so how do you want us to handle that I want to know what if you want me to I I was going to ask that question because I I understood from the previous meeting there was you know a little pull between the planning board and a couple of you at least not, about who should be the S special permit granting authority if you do not to change that subject and I know that we yeah and agree. I'm sorry I just changed no, no, it from I, that I, I, I'm very on sorry. the same same topic but yeah. As our discussion earlier, Trevor, you wanted to wait till next week. I'm going to ask Wendy to follow up and give us a timetable on how to proceed with Perfect. that as well, okay? Thank yeah, you. No, that's fine. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. I to clarify that. Yeah. Oh, you tell me tomorrow. I'll tell you later. I, I, again, I'm hope I'll be in in the afternoon. Okay. Well, anyways, this thing. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. This is, from reading this thing, this is more about emergency triage training. I, well, it's, it's for school. It's for school, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, yeah, this would be funded by, um, Homeland Security. This is not us paying for it. Yeah. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm I, I, was just I guess excited. I'm just, after I, I was reading just this. Excited, I was just excited because traditionally we don't have a lot of um, participation. Um, I guess I, and, I, I'm and just so saddened by the fact that you read this and mm -hmm. school nurses are there to take care of kids who, who cut their knees or have a cough, not about mass casualties. I, I just, it's awful it just state bothers of the world. me. Yeah. yeah, but that's the way the world, that's no. the way it I is. understand. And we have and we actually have a very um, good mass casualty um, plan mm -hmm. that again came through Homeland Security that um, yeah. um, our South County Steve EMS it's called, it's also for natural disasters. Natural disasters. I mean this could be trained derailments, it could be all kinds of stuff. It's not we're doing actually. Well I wanted to move those swings away from the train tracks. <laughs> I know. 
I, two years I, ago. I, I know, Kip. No. I, we'll get a grant. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> we'll start a committee. I make. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. What did I just agree to? I don't know.